All right, so we've talked a little bit about rate, unit rate, units for the rate. <clears throat> a rate is, um, you know, a, uh, a value for a quantity divided by or per another value for another quantity. So $150 in six hours, let's say that's what you make in your job. What is the unit rate for that? And again, the unit rate is per one unit. So if you make $150 in six hours, then you simply do 150 divided by six. And that's $25 an hour. That's a pretty good wage, right? $25 per hour. So that is per one hour. Got it? That's a unit rate. The units for any rate would be, again, as I mentioned, um, if you're looking at the graph, it's the dependent variable units on top and the independent variable units on the bottom. And that's because the, the rate is really the same as slope. And the slope is always change in y divided by change in x. So that's this variable unit divided by this variable unit. Got it? Okay. So all that's important. What's a rate? What's a unit rate? The units for the rate. Okay. And how would you find a rate given a line on a graph? Well, as I just mentioned, if we're talking about a graph, the rate between the two variables, that's the rate of change, would be the slope between any two points. If it's a straight line, then you have a constant rate throughout the problem. If the line is not straight, let's say you have a graph like this, and this is important, you can still find a, uh, a rate, but it would be an average rate between this point and this point. It would be just average. It's not the exact rate at the exact time. Because the graph, if the graph is not linear, right, in between here, it could be whatever, right? It could be like this, then it drops like this, then it goes crazy. So if the line is a straight line, you have the same rate throughout the whole problem. And how is the unit rate used to compare rates? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at here in example one. So please take a look on page 453 uh, with me on example one. And we'll head to the textbook there. So here's example one here. This is the one we're going to uh, focus on here. So it says this, and again, this compared to uh, compared to the last chapter, right? This might be a little bit easier for you. You might like this a little bit uh, more if you struggled with the last chapter. Okay, but anyways, let's take a look at it. So Natasha can buy a 12 kilogram turkey from her local butcher for 42.89. Okay, so right there you see a rate, don't you? Here's a rate. We have 12 kilograms and we have 42.89 for dollars. <coughs> All right. Now, usually when we're talking about this kind of thing, it's dollars per kilogram, right? It's not usually kilograms per dollar, right? Because the mass is usually something that's independent, and then the price depends <coughs> on what kind of uh, you know meat it is or whatever. So you don't ever take a dollar and then you decide, okay. Um, I, I, I got to sell this turkey for forty-two dollars. Let's let's find a turkey that's exactly you know eleven point nine kilograms, right? You don't do that. You just grab a turkey, you weigh it. There we go. The price is per pound, right? So we're talking about forty-two eighty-nine per uh, twelve kilograms. Everyone see that? That's our first rate. And what we're doing here is we're comparing rates. So we have um, the other rate at the supermarket, okay? So a local butcher here, and then a supermarket is 149 per pound. So I'm gonna write that uh, down here as well. Let's write it over here. 149 per one pound, okay? Is one pound LB or L LBS? LB. Okay. Huh. Um, no. Let's take a look at that, actually. It looks, it looks really weird. Pound. I know it's singular, but anyways, I'm just wondering if it should be LBS, even if it's just one. Because if you have anything other than one, it would be LBS, right? Like 0.9? Right? 
Anyways, uh, well, yeah, you guys look that up. That'd be good. Okay. So, what's the problem here? Can I compare? Because if I look right here, um, 149 versus $42, I'm going to go with this one for sure. Right? Because I'm just looking at money, so I want to spend less money. So this is a better deal automatically, correct? No, it's not. Why? Why is it not? Uh, why can't I just do that? Why can't I just look at the money and compare those two numbers? Because... Yeah, it's a different unit, right, for the mass here. That's right. So, yeah? No. This last part, it says there's about 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. So that's going to be important for what we're doing next. So if we want to compare rates, it's important to make sure that the units are the same, right? Um, would, you rather, would you rather run three miles or you know, um, four kilometers. If you just say, hey, three, four, I'm going to go with a three for sure. Well, you have to be careful with that because miles are much bigger than kilometers, right? So three miles would be more than four kilometers, right? So you have to be careful. You have to look at the same unit, okay? All right, so we're going to change one of these, either kilograms, we're going to change that to pounds, or we're going to change this pound to kilograms. Now, we already have a unit rate here, so the second part of that is, let's stick with the unit rate, and let's compare everything in dollars per pound. So, how many of you remember unit analysis? Remember me talking about unit analysis? I've talked about that in math and in science, actually. We talked about that in physical science. So, if I have 12 kilograms, let's just take a different uh, color here. If I have 12, it's not a different color, 12 kilograms, and I want to convert this to pounds, all right? What do I multiply by? And again, if you think about unit analysis, you're going to multiply the number of pounds per kilogram, right? Why? Because you want to get rid of these units of kilograms here. You would like to eliminate those units, and so you're going to end up with pounds. So what's the conversion rate in the question here? There are 2.2 pounds per one kilogram. So this is how we make our conversion. Okay. So what's 12 times 2.2? Twenty six point four, very good. Twenty six point four, and that's going to be pounds. So, two things: units. We want to compare the same values for the units, uh, for the rates, and uh, the unit rate, like per one, is always a good idea to do. But as long as the bottom number is the same. <clears throat> so right now I have one forty nine per uh, pound for one pound. Okay. And I have over here now 42.89 per 26.4 pounds. See that? I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, per one lbs. I'm just gonna do that. Okay, so you can see it's the same same pounds. I just I think that's that just looks better. Looks like 11 bs now, but I don't know. Okay, one. Okay, so. Now what do I do? What do I do to compare these? Anybody know? Divide. Divide what? Divide this right one. Okay. So again, I want to compare this. I want this to be a unit rate as well. Oh, that was weird. Okay. So I want this to be a unit rate as well. So I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to divide. That's right. So 42.89 divided by 26.4. And that's 1.62 uh, dollars per pound. So it's 1.62 dollars per one pound. So now, now that I've got them in the same units and they're both unit rates, look at how easy this is to compare now. Which one is cheaper? Now I can just look at the numbers because they're all in the same unit. Okay. So the 149, if you go back to the question, the 149 was the supermarket, right? Supermarket. So in this case, you would say supermarket 
is cheaper. Okay, so obviously considering uh, that they're the same brand of turkey and whatever, there's no other factors that we're considering, probably one would choose the turkey from the supermarket because it's cheaper. Okay, any, any questions or thoughts on that? No? So in example two, describe a scenario that could represent this uh, graph, compare the rates shown, discuss why the rates may have changed. Okay, so this is something you've done in previous lessons. This is not the focus of this lesson, interpreting graphs, but uh, you did this in grade 10 and, and even in grades before. Um, to suggest some kind of situation for this is important, you know, critical thinking. We have kilometers here and we have time. Okay, so someone is, uh, or something is moving in half an hour, right, 30 minutes, they're moving two kilometers, okay? So what would you suggest could be, what could be moving two kilometers in 30 minutes? A bullet or a grandma? A bullet or a grandma? Just trying to help you giving some suggestions. Don't combine the two there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So would a grandma walking down the street maybe do this, or would a bullet shot out of a gun go two kilometers in 30 minutes? Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, yeah, she might stop and pet the dogs, but obviously if this was grandma, she didn't. Okay? She did not stop. Okay, so let's say someone was walking here, and they went two kilometers in 30 minutes. Okay? Nice leisurely stroll. So what happened between the 30 minute and the 40 minute mark here? She stopped and pet the dog right here, okay? Or pick the flowers or talk to the neighbor or whatever. Then what happened from 40 minutes to about 60 minutes here? What happened? Now she's booking it. She is now booking it down the street, right? So obviously, look at what we've already said. You know she's going faster. Why? Because the slope is greater. The rate of change, her kilometers per minute, is now greater, okay? So what about what about what happened here at 60 minutes? She broke her leg. Okay, there, I heard two things. She broke her leg. This poor grandma broke her leg, or she got on the bus. So which one would be more likely? Broke her leg. Okay, so she broke her leg. So that means at 60 minutes, in the next five minutes, she traveled five kilometers in five minutes with a broken leg. Okay. Okay, no, and she didn't roll down a hill while it was broken. No, let's not do that. A big steep hill she rolled down. No, no. Okay, so look at everyone. Just pay attention, please. Focus. If she broke her leg, that probably means she would probably be, you know, sitting on a bench or something in pain, or something. she wouldn't be moving. She wouldn't be moving faster than she had before. This part of the graph, okay, going backwards. Girls, listen, please. This part of the graph, she's going in the opposite direction, right? Kilometers here, kilometers here. If this is a starting point, she's gone five kilometers away. Now she's returned back to her starting point. And it's taken her less time than any traveling portion before that. This is a very steep graph. It's just a negative graph, okay? So the rate of change is greater in this section than these other two, other three. This is zero. What's this one? It's two kilometers per 30 minutes which would be about what per hour? Four kilometers per hour maybe, right, at this rate. So if you extended this line to 60, it would be right here at four. So four kilometers per 60 minutes or four kilometers per hour. And two divided by 30, that would be your decimal for kilometers per minute. Okay, so the slopes at each one, okay. Remember this please, uh, this is something you learned in grade 10 as well. Slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that is the, ch the rise, okay, or the change in x, uh, y values, sorry, divided by the change in x values. So this is very important to make sure that you have this written down and you're understanding that. And if we're looking at how the slope is actually determined between two points, you take the y value of one of the points and you subtract the y value of the other points. Okay, so I don't think I need to go over this here, but this would be, y value would be two for this point, y value here is zero, so two minus zero divided by x value for this point is 30 minus x value is zero. So two minus zero divided by 30 minus zero, slope is 
2 over 30, 1 over 15. Okay? Slope. That's rate of change. Units would be kilometers per minute. Got it? <coughs> All right. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, again, if we have two different rates and you want to compare them, get to a unit rate by simply dividing the top number divided by the bottom number. And that will give you a unit rate. Okay? So unit rate always comes from just the top number divided by the bottom number. Okay, you guys pay attention. Take a minute to read the in summary here now. Okay, so the slope of the line down here at the bottom represents the rate of change. Okay, and if you divide the number on top by the number on the bottom, you always get a unit rate. Uh, the two points, or the, uh, uh, the relationship between the two variables as a rate is always the average between those two points. If it's a straight line, it's the same rate throughout. Okay. All right, so your assignment is uh, questions 1 to 13. And those will be due Monday. So here are the first few questions. 1 to 13.